Um, I want to start by thanking you for joining me virtually tonight. I'll be honest with you, I really miss in-person back to school night. Um, I always enjoy the energy of the room just as I do having students back uh, in class in person as well. So that's been a joy. Um, and I'm sorry that we can't meet in person tonight. I know for some people this is more convenient, uh, but for me, it's, uh, it's not quite the energy that I'm used to, but we'll do our best to, um, to give you as much as I, I'm used to giving. Um, in our time together uh, tonight, um, my main purpose is to just give you a flavor of what it is that your students are experiencing in this class. Um, the details um, you can find on our Schoology page or you can talk to your student and you can always email me if you want to know more. But um, I wanna to begin tonight just by saying um, a little bit about me as the instructor first, and then I wanna dive right into a little bit of what your students are learning right now. Um, first of all, my name is Josh Bloom. Uh, I've been teaching in the district for 20 years. This is my 21st year, and it's my 21st year teaching this course. Um, I brought the course, I started the course at Gunn, uh, and taught there for seven years. That's also the high school that I graduated from, so I'm quite familiar with Palo Alto. Um, and then um, partway through my career, I moved over to Pali and brought the course with me, and I've been teaching it here uh, ever since. So uh, this course is my baby. I love this course. I'm constantly evolving it, and um, I'm, it's always a pleasure to have um, students like yours in it with me. Um, this quote very much represents my philosophy as an educator and really in some sense, what I've come to find to be the purpose of this course. And that is the idea that the most precious freedom is inner freedom, which arises from realizing who we are, how and why we function as we do, and what is actually of ultimate significance in our lives. And um, I think science uh, provides important information and insight into the answer to these larger questions, although it is certainly not the only avenue for information and perspective, it is a powerful one. And this course in particular, I believe offers that. What makes astrophysics and astronomy unique compared to the other sciences is it looks at the universe at its most largest and smallest scales and asks profound and fundamental questions that humans have been asking for thousands upon thousands of years. But what I've come to find in my 20 years of teaching this course, is that what this course ultimately gets to is the question of what is my significance? And as I tell um, my students, um, I will not attempt to give students the answer to that question. I don't have it, um, but it is a question that ultimately I think we all seek. And um, it's something that each of us is on our own personal journey to find throughout our life. And I think this course has a lot to offer on the way to thinking about that. So what I wanna do with our time tonight is just give you a little, um, sense of that. Um, and this is something that um, your students have, uh, have been uh, exposed to over the last uh, three plus weeks now in school. And uh, they can tell you all about this. So they've got a lot more information they can share with you about it. And in fact, we're coming close to wrapping up this unit over the next week. Um, so I'm just going to dive right into it. Um, when you look at the planet Earth, it's a pretty big world. And you are here. Um, but it's pretty amazing to imagine that the nearly 8 billion people on this planet, as many people as that is, could all stand within the boundaries of the state of Rhode Island. And that is how small human beings are compared to our planet. And yet we have a significant impact, at least on its um, atmosphere and biosphere. And to understand the great scales of the universe that we live in, <clears throat> we have to use scales that are familiar to us. And so I like to use the classroom as a point of reference. So if you imagine shrinking the earth down to the size of a classroom, you could ask the question, how big would a city like San Francisco be home to roughly a, a million or so people? And the answer is, is if the earth were the size of a classroom, San Francisco would be the size of a penny on the wall. And if you zoomed in on that penny and you tried to use a classroom microscope to see deep into that penny, you might be able to make out a little tiny speck of dust. And that speck of dust would be approximately the size of actually a house within which would be human beings. And just as a point of reference, the speck of dust that I'm referring to here is something on the order of a thousandth of a millimeter, visible only under a microscope. So when the earth is the size of a classroom, we are barely microscopic. But of course, the universe is much larger than the earth. And if we were to shrink the earth down, 
so that we could fit the entire sun inside of the classroom. We would have to shrink the earth down quite a bit smaller because the sun compared to the earth is dramatically larger. It's about 107 times the diameter of the earth. And so if we were to put the sun in a classroom, we would have to shrink that classroom size earth on which we were a microscopic particle. We'd have to shrink the earth down to the size of a softball. And of course we would go with it. And at that point we are no longer microscopic. So even just putting the sun in the classroom now makes us beyond visible in a microscope. But of course, there's a lot more to the universe than our sun. Our sun is, for all intents and purposes, the center of a system of planets to which Earth belongs, but there are many others. And if we shrunk the sun down so that our solar system could fit within the classroom, that sun, which was the size of a classroom making the Earth a softball, would now have to shrink all the way down to the size of a grain of sand a bright little pinprick of light in the middle of the room. And all the planets, including the Earth, they are now the dust particles, orbiting around every few inches and then every few feet. And the rest of the room is primarily empty space. And of course, we are living on that tiny dust particle, which when the size of a classroom, we were a dust particle. So at this scale, we're a dust particle on a dust particle. But there's more to the universe than the solar system. The solar system is one of a few hundred billion stars in the Milky Way. And just to imagine what a few hundred billion is, if you were to stack 200 billion pennies, which is on the lower end of the number of stars we think exist in our galaxy, that would be a stack of pennies about 10 stories high, taking up the footprint of a football field. And one of those pennies represents our sun. The rest are all the other stars in our galaxy. And so if we shrunk the entire galaxy down to fit in the size of the classroom, then every star, including the sun, would now shrink down to an atomic size. And so now stars are the size of individual atoms. And a dust particle, that same dust particle that was the Earth, that dust particle is now the entire solar system. But there are more galaxies in the universe than our own. Our galaxy is part of a massive group of galaxies that are all swarming around each other that we call the local group. And if we were to squeeze that local group into our classroom, then every galaxy now shrinks down to the size of a bottle cap and they would exist roughly one meter away from every other bottle cap. But our galactic group is part of much larger structures, clusters of groups of clusters that we call superclusters of galaxies, containing hundreds and thousands of galaxies. And so if we shrunk that supercluster that our galaxy belongs to into the classroom, then all the galaxies shrink down to the size of baby aspirin, and little one meter wide clusters throughout the room, each baby aspirin containing hundreds of billions of stars and at least as many planets, some of which may be habitable and harbor life, maybe even intelligent life. We know of at least one, and that, of course, is us. But our observable universe is made up of a vast network of superclusters. And if we were to shrink the entire observable universe, which we believe to be approximately 100 billion light years across, into the size of a classroom, if you were to open the door and walk into that classroom, you would basically see a massive cosmic web like cobwebs from floor to ceiling, wall to wall. And on every strand of cobweb, there would be a sprinkling of dust and every speck of dust would be an individual galaxy. So we are a dust particle on a dust particle within a dust particle that's spiraling out in a collection of hundreds of billions of dust particles that itself is a dust particle in the grand scale of the observable universe. And so that offers us, offers us some perspective. And that is just scratching the surface of what we've talked about over the last few weeks. So before we close tonight, and I wish our time was longer, um, it is a reasonable proposition at this point in science to suggest that our observable universe may be one of many in a much larger set of existence we might call the multiverse. And that's something we'll talk about later in the course. Um, so before we close, just real quick, in case you're curious what we cover in this course, of course, we cover the structure and scale of the universe is what we're doing right now. We'll have a long unit on gravity, special relativity, general relativity, quantum mechanics, all basically non-mathematical, understanding it qualitatively. We'll do um, a little bit of research into space exploration and space tourism. During second semester, we'll talk about planetary systems, stellar evolution, and cosmic evolution as a whole. So uh, no small topics. Um, the last thing I'll share with you is that if you want to dive into some of this content yourself and see what we're doing, you're welcome to go to our Schoology page. And on our Schoology page, there are video versions of the lessons that we cover in class from our year of distance learning. So you can enjoy them too. 
If you've got any questions or any concerns that you want to reach out to me for, uh, you can always contact me at jbloom at pausd.org, and I will do my best to get back to you uh, within 48 hours. If you don't hear from me, please feel free to email me again and remind me that you were reaching out.